Okay, so good morning. Uh, as I mentioned, we are at the, at the end of May, and so there's only a couple of weeks more before uh, the end of the courses. And uh, we are trying, <clears throat> we are now trying to, uh, let's say, to work uh, towards the, the already, uh, towards the idea of the exam. You saw the dates, so let me hope this will load. And so you uh, have noticed uh, the dates of the exam. So the exam will be uh, is now confirmed on the 29th of June, and it means uh, that uh, the projects uh, uh, must be submitted by the midnight of the 28th of June. Okay. Uh, as per, uh, according to the to the rules of the exam. So if uh, you, I, I assume you already have uh, uh, read and uh, analyzed the exam rules that we published on the website. Okay, so the submission deadline for the project is uh, midnight of the day before the official exam date. So, so let's just be clear on the, on the, uh, on the uh, 29, we just, uh, take uh, what is uh, uh, the list of projects that has been submitted and uh, we close the list there. So you don't have the full day of 29, but uh, you must close by the day before. On the 29, we will uh, make the list and uh, uh, schedule the, the, the oral discussions. Okay, and so the text, uh, we promise that uh, in the, the text of the exam, uh, in the rules, we declare that it will be published. Uh, I don't I don't find the place. Uh, yes, 20 days in advance. The text will be published 20 days in advance. And this means that uh, uh, will be published on the, the 9th of June. So with, uh, uh, we will publish the text of the project with the requirement, with functional requirements and uh, some details about what we expect about the project. Okay, uh, and the idea is to have a discussion about and uh, and uh, question and answer about uh, the the exam on the twelfth uh, of June. Okay, so the twelfth of June, uh, no laboratory on last week, but uh, discussion or clarifications on the exams uh, from, uh, we decide something like from 9.30 to 11.30. Okay, so uh, this is a very important date. We will publish the text on the 9th of June. You have uh, uh, two or three days to analyze the text and start thinking about the project. And then everything which is not clear, not well specified, uh, you maybe something that uh, it seems ambiguous or you have some doubts, or whether you can um, say, uh, do it in a way or in a different way, uh, we have this uh, chat, which is very important, uh, on Friday morning. So this will be the last day <laughs> of the um, of the semester, and uh, uh, and in that day uh, we'll try to have an open discussion. Uh, I I allocated two hours, but if there are more questions, uh, uh, we can we can uh, even uh, occupy the next hour and go until all the the issues are resolved. Uh, so that uh, uh, not only you can read the text, uh, but you can have a better, uh, say, understanding of the details. And maybe if, if there are some, if there are some details which are not very clear, we can uh, update the text. So that we, can, we can debug the text uh, before you start really to work on it. Okay. Uh, e, so this is the, the, the path for, uh, for the first exam. We will do something similar. Uh, when the second uh, the, the exam for the second text will come out, okay. So we have also a session for uh, clarifications on the text of the exam, uh, so that we can improve it a, a couple of days uh, after it's uh, it's been published. Uh, this for, for is for the exam. Um, the for the topic of the course, uh, we only have one topic left. Uh, that is uh, uh, React hooks which is a very popular uh, feature of the React uh, 
uh, ecosystem. It's gaining a lot of uh, momentum, and uh, uh, it's uh, it doesn't add anything new to what we already can do with React components. Uh, uh, but it's a different way, and maybe in some cases a simpler way of managing the state, for example. Okay, uh, so it will be the, the only lecture in next week uh, will be about the hooks, uh, so that you also have some idea about those. Uh, um, you may use them, so the question that you already imagine is do we need to use the hooks uh, or another type of component or, or class-based components in our uh, project? Uh, it's up to you. No, so the answer is if we want to use them, if I, if I find them useful, can use the hooks, otherwise use just the components as we learned until yesterday. Uh, we feel it is important to discuss those, not just to add a new topic to the course, but because a lot of documentation, a lot of examples around uh, use this syntax, this new syntax, uh, and a lot of the, uh, the big community is going towards this. Uh, so it's better, it's good to have at least an understanding of what is happening on there, or what is happening. Then you decide whether you can use them or not in your project. And then the course is, is, is practically over. There is no new, um, no new topics. Uh, um, uh, we have, uh, you, uh, you might have already seen the last laboratory, uh, lab, which is covers uh, uh, lab 10, which covers two weeks. So it's a bit longer than the others. So we assume that you will start uh, tomorrow maybe working on lab 10 and you can finish next uh, next friday so uh, this would be the 29th of uh, june and uh, uh, what is the day the next friday would be the five sorry 29th of may and uh, the uh, 5th of june so everybody, everything is already written in the in the course schedule on, on the website, but just to clarify the planning, okay? So what is missing from now to the end of the course <laughs> is uh, uh, lab 10 that will start tomorrow and we close next week. So we have, uh, you have two weeks uh, to work on it. Uh, one lecture, and then we start working on the exam. Uh, maybe we can, <coughs> we are still not sure if we uh, will, uh, also, um, maybe share another exercise that we try to develop with all the technology, the, uh, because uh, the, the exercise we did up to now were done incrementally, okay? We learn a new piece of technology and then we improve the example. Uh, but maybe we want to show you an example with everything we know, how we start from, the, uh, from, from, from scratch and design a small system. Uh, maybe we can uh, also publish some exercise like that. Uh, uh, if you find this interesting, we can do that. Um, but this will be nothing new topics. Uh, there, there will be no new topics, just okay, application of, uh, uh, of what we already know and in a way similar to what you're already doing in the labs. Um, yes, as you know, the exam, so the, the, the details for submissions will be in the text. Will be in the text. How to how to push, how to pub, how to send the, the address of the repository, on, and so on. Okay, of course the, the submission will be on GitHub. Will be in the exam text so that we have, we will give you all, all the instructions how to proceed. Um, okay, so I think that's uh, basically all uh, for this long uh, path we came together. And so if uh, you have any question or is that, uh, there's anything that I left out, uh, please ask me. Okay, uh, this is an interesting question actually. A question about the routers, how can we change the HTML title for each route? Um, it's, uh, uh, 
So there are, uh, I see at least two examples, two, two ways of doing that. Uh, um, uh, none of them are quite straightforward. So maybe we'll, uh, we will put this feature in one of the next examples that we'll develop so that we can have a working example. But uh, uh, the one possibility could be to change it uh, with JavaScript. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure if there's a property like window dot title uh, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure about the name. Uh, for well, in your uh, in your render function, so when you're rendering a given uh, a given route, uh, you can set the title uh, to that uh, specific name, um, or you can uh, mount. Uh, uh, the the title or or a part of the ad uh, as a component. Uh, so you actually render a call the render function react the render of a, a component into the title tag. So normally we are we are mounting the application into a div, but nobody uh, so uh, it's, it's possible to mount different components into different. Uh, uh, HTML elements. Uh, this would um, imply modifying, uh, modifying, modifying the index.js and index.html. So it, it can be done, it's not done inside the app.js because we already nested inside the div, but uh, since the whole, the whole application will start from index.html that will then call index.js, Inside index.js, we have the mount instruction for the app. We can add a second mount that will mount a component that will react to the router and change just the content of the title. So this could be the, the, the React way. Okay. So, but we need to work one, one layer above uh, the layer where we, are, where we are usually working. It's just uh, in theory. Okay. I'll try to. to to, to implement that in an example so that I can show you the, uh, the code also. Okay, another question about the JWT. How can we implement that only some page require the JWT token? Uh, for example, the login should not require it. Uh, okay, yes. Um, so, uh, first, first of all, is not pages who request the tokens, but uh, uh, let's say API calls. Okay, so uh, it's not the front end. Page. The front end pages don't care at all about uh, the token. It's the back end APIs that uh, are protected um, uh, with, with the token. Okay, we are talking that has been sent to the project. So what we can do is uh, uh, mm, uh, so one possibility is just uh, not to registering not registering the uh, jwt middleware on the application like with app.use uh, jwt and then the object, uh, but on, a, on individual routes. So for example, you have app.get. Uh, maybe you want to gain a route uh, API slash uh, users, uh, not users, let's say to do. And uh, uh, for this, uh, you specify the middleware. So before the the function that uh, uh, returns a request, uh, that handles the request, that is so of course the main topic of the of the get. We have the middle argument that can be one or more middlewares. So at this point, uh, you could add uh, here the uh, the JWT call. Okay, so this in this case, the middleware will only be applied to this function and not to all uh, functions. Um, if we have more than one middleware to call, they can also be listed in a, into an array. Okay, so 
uh, before processing the page, uh, you have many other pre-processing steps. Uh, App.use is just a shortcut to, um, to apply the same middleware to all the requests, okay? Um, I think that, uh, uh, so this is one, one possibility. The second possibility is uh, uh, defining routes. Uh, let's say defining further public routes. Then call app use. Then private routes. So it should work because uh, the private route will be defined uh, after we register the, the middleware. And so the first ones should be defined without any middleware. So it has to be tested, but it should work because we are installing the middleware after we define some, route, some routes and the first one will not have the middleware applied. Um, yeah, uh, the other of course could be in, uh, creating your own middleware to wrap, sorry, to wrap this, uh, uh, Sorry, I have too many. Um, the wrapping this JWT so that you can create your own and you, then you decide whether to return true or false or to call the JWT. So there are many, uh, se several methods. I think the cleanest one is this one because it's more explicit. Okay, this route is protected. I want the token here. All the others may not be protected and so we don't need the, to have the token in that case. Uh, Marco is also asking whether we can use the proxy approach for the project. Yes, it's the recommended one. Recommended approach for the exam. It's some project. It's, uh, it's easier because everything uh, it runs on a single URL, so you, we don't need to solve all the cores, uh, the problem. It's not a big, a big issue because it's just a middleware to install, but uh, we find it's uh, easier and quicker to work with the proxy approach. Of course, you will have uh, uh, your repository will have two separate folders in which you have the React and uh, the server, and, and you can proxy between them. Like, like we did in the last uh, client server server example, the structure of the project could be that one, and you can install the project. It's uh, for development project, it's uh, the quickest solution. Okay, there's a question that I need to read <laughs> carefully. Uh, in slide 36, uh, why is it stated that only non-GET API should be protected by CRS protection and also by the API that provides the CRS protection needs the CRS protection? Um, let me pick up slide 36 uh, in hoping we didn't write anything wrong or unclear. JWT. Okay, so this one is special because it's the API for generating the token. Okay, so it's not a normal um, API like uh, no, the REST. It's not a REST endpoint because it doesn't uh, uh, give any 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 entity a description in JSON. It's a special one. Okay, so it, it, it doesn't count as a normal API. Um, the fact that we didn't so the CRSF is, how to say, is not used for authorization, okay? Uh, so whether the API is valid or not to be called is decided by the JWT token. So if you have a valid token with a valid user, then you are supposed to carry on with the, uh, 
uh, with the request. Okay, uh, the CRSF uh, uh, only uh, protects, uh, it gives an additional level of protection when some kind of calls may be made by the browser without uh, uh, without the the JavaScript code knowing that. Uh, usually, uh, so you are you are you are inside one session which is already authenticated by, as a user, and then you want to prevent this session to do extra actions uh, that could be dangerous. Okay, um, so gets are not dangerous from that point of view because the gets don't change the state of the backend. A get means that the JavaScript will get information from the server, which is information that the server will give anyway because the user is authenticated the problem is that if i'm trying to modify some server state for example with a put and this is not part of the logic of the application but it's some sort of a, a high hijacking uh, um, so that's why the, the important ones to protect are the uh, apis that modify the data so put and post and delete uh, the get usually give you some data but those data is already available because you are working inside an authenticated session. This one, uh, as you said, you say it's crazy. It's creating a loop. Basically, is not a is not a real API, just an endpoint for creating the token. So it's sort of a, in in more complex architectures, you would have one server that will generate the token, and other servers that will maybe maybe many more that will just uh, check them, check their validity. So right now we are collapsing everything in one point, but uh, the the authentication point is here. We generate a token, and the authorization point is there. So what you are talking uh, here in, in the in the slide, which is, I, I admit is not very clear, uh, is not. Uh, um, it's only about the uh, authorization part. Uh, yes, one thing that we decided to do since uh, all this security stuff uh, um, has been uh, just uh, giving for as, as examples. Okay, uh, I'm uh, anticipating the question in the exam. We will use, uh, uh, of course, uh, a JWT in the recommended way with cookies, but not CRSF because we are not uh, focused in this course we don't have time also to focus on the security level okay so we just gave you just some example of the added complexity that uh, this kind of uh, protection will give you um Uh, should we provide also a secret? Uh, well, the secret. Uh, well, I I don't care. I mean that uh, any secret will do. So if you leave it empty, uh, we just put one uh, by ourselves and then try the application. Um, because the only requirement is that the secret, uh, when you generate the token, and the secret when you check the token will be the same. Sorry. Uh, yes, the secret of the used by the API that generates the token, and the secret secret available to the API that will check the token must be the same. Uh, we don't need to have the same uh, uh, the same secret as you do. So you can use one secret in, in development and then you, you just put uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, or for committing, for example. Uh, and uh, and we can use that or we can change it. Uh, so as long as we, we start, uh, uh, we start uh, the server with a given secret, then those tokens will be self-consistent. Okay, so. Uh, in general, what, what we try, what we usually do, is to put a secret uh, into uh, a separate file. For example, I don't know secret.js, and then don't, don't not commit it. Don't commit it. And then uh, also have some sort of a 
uh, have documentation slash example file. <coughs> Let's call it a secret uh, uh, secret uh, slash um, I'll call uh, example for example the JS with uh, uh, the right syntax right the declaration with a fake value and a documentation and a comment explaining what you do So I mean, uh, uh, something that will write uh, const a secret equal to nothing or null or a string, and then a comment saying, okay, take this example file, secret example, copy it to secret.js and modify the secret. So that in the distributed version will not run because this, this file is missing when you clone the, the repository, but at least you have an example here that you may just have to copy and rename and of course, this will be committed to the repository. So usually, the, the solution that we have, uh, is a simple one, is like that. So that we are forcing every developer to create one file in their project, and then it will be also a file outside the uh, um, version control, and we give the documentation of what to write into that file. In many, many examples, you find around, uh, they use uh, an approach similar to this one. What we should try to do in the in the test uh, of on the in the exam text is give uh, um, deployment instructions. So uh, we will write uh, your project should be should uh, should run uh, with the with the following set of instructions: start the client, start the server, and so on. So that we can apply this uh, procedure when you when we evaluate your project, and we know that every project will be run in the same way. Otherwise, we will get crazy reading, installing instructions, or something like that. So we'll try to uh, simplify a bit the, the different possibilities. That's why we're going for the proxy, we're going for the JWT, and so on. We are standardizing a bit this part of the operation side and deployment side of the uh, of the project. Any other questions? Uh, 
Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, so you're saying with well, Exxon Mobil will be public or private? You're right. Since you are forking a public project, uh, you cannot make it private anymore. Uh, we probably uh, we are evaluating. We are, so we we still haven't decided. There is a feature which is called, which is called the GitHub Classroom. uh that can create automatically private forks for uh for private uh, exam projects so also the, the the text of the exam will be published as a repository in this github classroom and uh, the fork will not be done by you but this by this but inside this environment and so this will create a, a, a set of repositories that are inside the, uh, the organization and not inside your profile uh, so we are we are doing some tests. So okay, we are we are we are evaluating whether to use you you evaluate it. Uh, and so this will solve us uh, some some problems because all the creation and the permissions on the repositories uh, is uh, uh, it's uh, managed automatically by that. Um, of course, <clears throat> we know that private means nothing. Okay. So if uh, if you if you have a private repository and you share want to share your code with your friend, <laughs> of course uh, nobody can stop you. Uh, but uh, I feel it's better that uh, uh, say a student uh, working on some project should not make it uh, public uh, for, uh, for because maybe it contains some some error or something bad and doesn't you don't you don't want to show it around and I. I think it's better uh, to keep them private so that nobody just uh, out of curiosity should go and look there. Classroom is a, a, will already automate part of that, but there's some association of, uh, of student IDs with the GitHub identifiers uh, that is still not clear to us. So we are doing some tests for that. And before we will put uh, the instructions in the text of the exam after we tested the, the, the best option. Will the DB be in the repository? Uh, no. Uh, it's yours. It's yours project. Your DB. Maybe uh, we provide uh, some partial tables. Maybe the user table, for example, so that everybody has the same structure so that we can evaluate it. But then, um, We'll try to give you some uh, description of the project at the feature level. So we don't want to be um, fixed on the details, like you must put a button here, you must put a, a checkbox there, and so on. We'll try to describe the, the, the assignment uh, as a set of features that you must implement. So then how to implement them, so how to structure your data, how to create, structure your pages, and so on, will be a part of your uh, your development uh, job so we are, we'll, you will not be constrained too much of course uh, if we are describing that we i don't know represent something information about uh, you know the bus uh, routes uh, of course there will be some mandatory information to store in the table but uh, how you store them it's up to you uh, maybe but it depends on the exam also maybe provide some day some uh, some seed data 
So uh, if there if it depends on some you know list of, of information that uh, should already be available, okay, we provide it so they can you can load your database with that. But uh, all the rest, of course, will be generated by the application. So basically, you're free. We can give you maybe some uh, some uh, some starting items, but then you are free to develop your own. The only constraint that we put is try to use uh, SQLite uh, for the, it has several limitations. It's not really uh, SQL, but uh, it helps a lot with the uh, with an easy of deployment. Because otherwise, if you are using other databases, we need to start an app, import, and change the credentials and so on. So it will be much uh, much heavier. So we have to stay within the limitation of SQLite. Yes, yes, Pierluigi. Yes, as we mentioned before here, that uh, there's only one topic left, which is the hooks, and then we just have to prepare for the exam. Oh, no problem. So we have, we have only one lecture uh, left uh, scheduled for the next week. So we can all take a rest. Not really because uh, we have to work for the exam, but at least we can stop all this uh, rush.
week over week. Okay. Do you have other open issues? Or should we close the, the call? Okay. Um, I, I have one, one question for, for the oral exam, uh, because our plan would be to check uh, your code. Of course, we will check the code on our computers. We'll try to run them. But during the oral, the, the oral discussion, uh, you should be able to, to search the code and show us and, and describe it and comment it. And so it will be much better if you can do that on your computer. Uh, do you think there will be any difficulty during the discussion in uh, sharing your screen and maybe also giving control to us of your computer so that we can uh, discuss on the code together? Uh, so it's, it's, do you also feel that it's better if you can work on your computer and share it with us instead of the other way around of running it on our computers and, and we share with you. So the, the only... Yeah, yeah, it can, it can, the control can be done in both ways. The only problem is that when I maybe ask, uh, we ask her something, well, can, can you show me where you implemented this, uh, I don't know, this, the validation of this form? You should be able to seek uh, where, in your code where, where it is. And so if you are using your editor in your computer, maybe you are more familiar with that instead of doing something at this time. That's, uh, uh, that's the reason. And uh, yeah. Uh, so the only issue it could be an issue with the connect the connection because at that point you will have uh, like I'm doing here sharing the screen and sh sharing the video camera. Uh, so we hope that uh, it can work for everybody. Okay, so we'll try to to design the the oral in the, in that in that way. And if somebody cannot do that, then we will do the other way around because in any case, we will have the code on our computers also. Okay, sorry for all this question, but we need to try to write the, the exam text with, uh, with precise uh, rules so that we can don't have any surprises later on. I'm not able to tell you how many days uh, the, the oral discussion will last. Really, I know, I know no idea because it depends on how many people will uh, will submit the project. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's difficult to, to schedule right now and to plan. Uh, I'm sorry because it knows it may, it may overlap with some other exams. Of course, in, uh, in defining the schedule, we will try to take into account uh, if you have uh, other exams uh, or other some, uh, something else in, in parallel so that you can maybe shift uh, the, the, the schedule to match everybody's needs. It would be 
it will not be so easy because you, I know you have a lot of exams in a, in a very short time. But I try to think that uh, in the, uh, the 29th is uh, a 29 of June is the end of the week. No, it's a, it's a Monday, sorry, it's a Monday. Uh, we will need some days for uh, checking the, um, uh, the projects, uh, so at least two or three days. And so we, we I probably we published the, um, the schedule at the end of that week. And so the, the discussion will be most likely in the week starting in the 6th of June. If there is a significant number of projects, probably we'll have to, to take one week for the evaluation and the second week for the discussions. So that just keep in mind, uh, try to match that with that, the other exams that you have. Uh, so should we use the now links redirect and so on inside the app? Uh, yes, uh, tendentially yes. Uh, uh, the, um, the the routing, okay. Uh, it's up to you basically, but I find that uh, an application which is which contains uh, some pages uh, uh, is much easier to be developed with the writing routing functionalities rather than implementing that yourself uh, using the just a React state. So the router is just a, 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 an intelligent way of managing the React state for uh, for um, deciding the layout, uh, which I think I think it's more convenient anyway. Hmm? Uh, I don't know whether we will put uh, a requirement to use the router or not. Uh, probably yes, but um, in any case, uh, it's uh, it's faster okay to do that. Yeah, this is a, a difficult point. When we have to evaluate the error check into the database query, which is the best approach? Um, error management is always a mess, okay? It's always complex because there's a lot of uh, unknowns. Um, my uh, idea is that uh, say anomalous results for example an empty list an empty query a missing item uh, which are not wrong they're not errors just just strengths okay you get a list of items and the list is empty it's normal it may happen okay or you check the validity of a user password and the user doesn't exist. So it's a sort of application error, but it's not an error in, in the database query. So this must be handled correctly. Uh, that may be that you just return uh, a specific value, JSON value, I don't know, maybe an empty object. And on the client side, you need to interpret this empty object and not uh, throw any exceptions, for example, and when you pick the first item and the first item is not there, or uh, specific, or uh, return an error. 
an error object and so and then the, the client must handle gracefully or return an error object and the client will catch and manage it I would prefer the first one because actually, uh, but it's just my preference because actually it's not a real application error. It doesn't make sense to return a 500 code if uh, the username is not available, but either way it's working. Uh, another problem is uh, uh, bugs or exceptions, um, network errors, And so on. Okay, so we are using a local file a database. So in this case, the network problems inside the connection database will not happen. But these are more difficult. Okay, to uh, it's more difficult to handle them comprehensively, because if the query is wrong in some special case, it's wrong because it's a syntax error. It generates an error. You cannot correct it anyway. In any way. Okay. If there are just uh, intermittent network problems, then you can just retry it. For example. Or if you are trying a query, you don't have the authorization, you should redirect the user uh, to the login page, for example. Okay, uh, so I would say that at least uh, uh, catch all the exceptions. And display an error to the user, if possible, and if possible, Uh, let's let me I'm, let me put that in quotes. Uh, manage or propose a correction or a work or a workaround. I'm, I'm writing if possible because uh, uh, the amount of error correction that we can or uh, that we, we can manage strongly depends on the time that we have. Okay, so uh, because nearly every error can be managed in some way, but it takes time because you have to consider all the possible cases and so on. So uh, in the real world, uh, of course, the uh, managing the errors is important because we don't know to show strange messages or strange behaviors to the user. Um, but I would not like our project to be 90% of error management. Okay, because they want to see also some features, some working features, some positive working features. So uh, we will try not to stress too much this aspect. Uh, we, we, we will work within some assumptions that at least the infrastructure is working correctly. Okay, so we are more focused uh, on uh, errors that may happen due to special conditions so the user is not logged in the data is not available. I'm trying to delete an item that was already deleted or something like that, uh, that may happen in the normal application flow. These are important because the, the application should respond normally. Other type of problems, uh, I would be happy if we are uh, able to, to show it and to stop the user and show the message. It's not a, a general rule, but, uh, and of course, if something is easy to manage, but I would prefer, uh, uh, avoiding these situations uh, uh, rather than managing a lot of uh, otherwise the project will really grow bigger and longer yeah this um, the second part of your question is actually uh, uh, difference uh, we, we did differently also for for the sake of of, uh, of having small examples of course um, we can be optimistic or conservative so uh, the conservative way is updated the b uh, wait for confirmation and then update the state if okay. Uh, which good, uh, the problem is just that uh, uh, it may be slow. It may be slow on the user. The other uh, option, the optimistic one is update uh, the state uh, 
then update db. But at this point, you, we should be able to wait for confirmation. And in case of error, you should roll back the state. This last portion, rolling back the state, is extremely difficult because you should be able to remember the previous state and roll it back uh, to the, to the uh, so I have an history because maybe you are uh, doing s several asynchronous uh, modifications in parallel. Mm -hmm. So maybe we don't want actually to roll it back the state or at least uh, reload it from scratch. Okay, well, let's throw away our state and reload it again from uh, uh, as a new component, for example. And this at least will wipe out any intermediate value that we may have. Um, these, of course, uh, in the normal case, uh, it will be instantaneous because you have the state, the user interface it reacts immediately. And in asynchronously, also the database will be updated. In, when there is some problem, I need to manage it in some way. So the important part is uh, checking for the problem. And even if the solution that we have is not optimal, like uh, an error occurred, please reload, which is, is it's ugly to see, but uh, uh, it can be a first step. Uh, it's always better than just ignoring that and having the user interface and database become uh, desynchronized. Synchronization is always a, a, a big problem. Uh, what the, with the technology that we are using. Uh, if you use other type of uh, packages like the um, Redux, for example, the state managers, uh, there are packages that have this functionality built in of synchronization. So you update the state manager and will uh, handle the asynchronous uh, communication with the server. But we, we didn't feel like adding also that topic into this course. Uh, a mixed approach, I think it's the first one. I mean, what you say is query wait, and inside the then we upgrade the state, uh, it's this one, right? Not, or is it different? So the way for confirmation is the then in the fetch in the client. When I, uh, in the then I, it's okay. It's, I know that the request was okay and I can update the state. Or is it something different? In the solution instead of that, oh, okay, 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 I understand. Uh, yes, yes. You upgrade the state instead of not reloading everything. Yeah. Yes. Just be aware that the state uh, may, might be, we are in a synchronous world, might be also modified by something else in parallel. So or we'll be sure to define a callback function for that that will only run when the then is, uh, is, uh, is um, resolved, okay? Don't make a snapshot of the current state and then try to modify that because otherwise you may be overwriting some other information that some other callback might have uh, been modified, maybe even locally. Our idea would be also for the, all these kind of questions uh, to publish uh, some sort of uh, FAQ document, the frequently asked questions about uh, not just this exam, but in general, uh, how we expect the project to be developed. Uh, so it's very important for us to keep track uh, of all your of all these issues and questions so that we can also, uh, since we have several people that are managing the, the courses, so we are we are all the, on the same page about what we expect uh, 
in these uh, many particular cases. And uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, each of these questions hides something that in the real world, in a real production application, should be done much, much better than what we know or we, what we can do right now at, at this moment. Uh, web technologies are very, very wide and complex, and so every every corner of them has some something behind that which is bigger than we hope so. Okay, since we were talking about the exam, I just uh, add some information here about the second date, which is the 13th uh, of July. So the 20 day before will mean that we'll publish the text on the 23rd of June. And on some days later, two or three days later, we'll have the um, question and answer session for clarifying issues uh, on the text of the second uh, exam. And yes, I, I know that uh, there's a strong overlap uh, with the working you are doing, maybe some of you for completing the project uh, uh, for the first exam, and then there's already the text uh, for the second exam out, uh, which is out uh, five days before the deadline. And so it will be five crazy days in which uh, maybe many of you have to decide whether to complete the project that they already started uh, or start studying and working on the second case. Uh, it's, it's not nice. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what to do about that, okay? Because uh, the only solution 
I, I would see is to give you less days. So instead of publishing the project on the 23rd, I will publish it on the 29th or, or the 30th. But it, it, this works against you, okay? Because you will have less time to develop the project. Also, uh, the orals uh, will, the oral discussion will be the one week later. So it's, some people will uh, already uh, have uh, submitted the project. Uh, I waiting for the discussion and then uh, not knowing what to do with the next uh, uh, project. I, I, I don't think it can be solved, okay? If we want to give you some time to work on the project uh, and the, the dates of the exams are fixed, we, get, we have no control over them and they are two weeks apart for 15 days apart. Uh, I think the, the overlap is uh, uncomfortable, but uh, inevitable. Okay, so I think we had a good discussion today. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of specific topics. Uh, I'll try also to uh, to remember all of this and uh, uh, to make them uh, so that they, the the text of the exam will be clear in uh, in uh, some of these points. Um, uh, yes, they will go maybe onto details on the text on the frequently asked questions that we can we publish. So this is part of where we're trying to to be as much as clear as possible over the rules over we what we expect uh, but of course it's not much about what we expect at the exam which is important but we are just uh, you know one moment in your life uh, the important part is uh, uh, that you have in your mind many alternative ways of doing many steps many features and so you can decide on your own which is the best solution okay the best solution is not uh, what the professor likes more because professors are a bad kind of species and um, they, they 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 just can tend to be forgotten but uh, what is best for my project in this context so even the discussion that we had before on the database should they reload should they be optimistic or not it depends on your application uh, we we try to be in the in the exercises, be open and show different solutions. There are not all of them because the number of solutions is infinite. Uh, but uh, we, for, for me, it's really important that you have the elements, uh, or you we started to give you the elements uh, for you to decide how you solve a given problem. We cannot anticipate all the possible solutions. We give some patterns to help us uh, go forward, but every pattern is only applicable in a given context and in other context maybe it should be changed okay so that's uh, um, I, i'm a bit against setting too strict rules for the exam and would like to see you solve the problems uh, in the in the way that you, you 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 think it's better and then we have the discussion also to reason about why you did this or that i think it's much more uh, mature as an approach rather than filling the blanks uh, of a given uh, project uh, skeleton
Uh, okay, good. I think the, it's time to, to close the discussion. So you may have some rest before the next class uh, or whatever happens at 1130 in your, uh, in your schedule. And uh, we have still uh, one, I think, uh, where's the browser? Uh, we are still one. So I try to, to put the information here. So one lecture here. Okay, we have still a video chat next week. And we will be still before the exam comes out. So we're still friends. And uh, and uh, on, the five, on the fifth, we have the end of laboratory 10. And then uh, after that, we are only just focusing on the exam. So the, uh, the 12th of June, uh, so try to uh, we 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 set up two hours uh, in parallel between the Italian and the English course, uh, so that uh, hopefully all the problems can be sorted out and we can come out with a common decision. Uh, so I I would really look forward to seeing uh, many people in this day, mm, so that all the problems can be sorted out uh, without hurrying and without uh, too many simplifications. So all the people that want to work on the first exam. Uh, I, I hope that we can be present in this day. Of course, there will be the recording, but it's better that if you have the possibility of, of discussing so that all the problems can be sorted out as soon as possible. Okay, so thank you for being with me today and uh, see you next week uh, and wait for the last lecture so that we can celebrate uh, that we are closing also uh, the course uh, uh, with this last lecture. Bye-bye to everybody, thank you. <laughs>